So now we're going to start investigating the different types of lipids based on their biochemical function. So first we'll talk about energy storage lipids. Um, we've talked about one form of energy storage when we talked about carbohydrates, and that was glycogen. So glycogen was a polymer of glucose units that was highly branched, and it is the um, method of storing energy in um, primarily in your liver and in your muscle tissue. It's a very efficient means of storing quick energy, but it is present in small amounts. Um, the, the biggest energy source, though, which is not available as quickly as glycogen, is the triacylglycerols. And these are lipids, and these are, these are concentrated mostly in special cells called adipocytes. Um, and you know what adipose tissue is? That's fatty tissue, right? So this is, this is the fat that gets stored on your body, and we all know where it is, don't we? So these adipocytes fill up with triacylglycerols, and they pack in there really well, and they store a lot of energy, which is great if your body thinks you're going to be facing a famine in the near future. But here where we have plenty of food available, the body just keeps packing on more storage, and we just need to figure out a way to tell it to stop that. Um, yeah, this is, I think I, again, forgot to delete a slide. So this, I think, is my version of the previous slide. So glycogen is the energy-storing carbohydrate, but the triacylglycerols also store energy. And that adipose tissue is found under our skin, in the abdominal cavity, mammary glands, around various organs. It's the most abundant type of lipid in the body. And it's more efficient than glycogen because you can get large quantities packed into a very, very small volume. Yay for efficiency. So what are triacyl glycerols? Well, we've got a lot of, of prefixes and, and partial words in here. Tri means three. Three acyl glycerols. These are triesters. So here's glycerol. We've looked at him before. That's a tri-alcohol. And what's going to happen is we're going to form an ester, which we learned you can form esters between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So glycerol here is the alcohol, and the fatty acids are the carboxylic acids. So one way we represent this is using boxes. And we do this a lot because there are so many different fatty acids but this is just a more generic way of looking at it. So this is one representation of a triacyl glycerol. This is more of a structural formula for one. So here we see the three carbons from the glycerol. And these um, alcohol groups reacted with the carboxylic acid groups on the fatty acids and formed an ester linkage. And then there's the, the tail, the, the carbon chain here. And these could all be the same, or they could all be different. You could have three different fatty acids. But in the triacyl glycerols, glycerol is the alcohol, and the fatty acids are the carboxylic acids. They come together, and they form a triester. So we have triple esterification. So here's another, another look at it. Here's the glycerol. Here are the three fatty acids. So here's the carboxylic acid group. And what we learned in organic chemistry is that we take the hydrogen off the alcohol and the OH off the carboxylic acid, and those come away as water, and we're left with this ester linkage here. And so that happens on all three of the alcohol groups of the glycerol. And that's what gives us the, the triacyl glycerol. In this illustration, they're, they're looking at steric acid, which is 18 carbons and no double bonds.
So if we're going to define triacylglycerol, it's a lipid formed by a sterification of three fatty acids to a glycerol molecule. These are also called triglycerides. That's an older that's an older name that is still used, especially in medicine. Um, if you get your you know, blood panel done or something, they may talk about your triglyceride levels. Well, that means triacylglycerol. So tri means three. Acyl, what's acyl? An acyl group is the portion of a carboxylic acid that remains after the OH group is removed. So this is what an acyl group looks like. So there's the carboxylic acid, and when we take that off, what we have left is an acyl group. So it's these groups that are attached to this glycerol. So there's glycerol, and it's got three acyl groups on it. So we need to understand the overall structure of these different kinds of lipids. And the names actually do give us some pretty big clues about what's what. There are simple and mixed triacylglycerols. In a simple triacylglycerol, all three of the acyl groups are the same. And in a mixed one, they're different. Here, these three acyl groups are different. This is from an 18-2, an 18-1, and an 18-0 fatty acid. So they differ in the number of double bonds. They're different, and so this would be called a mixed triacylglycerol. Okay, draw the structural formula of the triacylglycerol produced from the reaction between glycerol and three molecules of lauric acid. Well, we need to know what lauric acid is. So let's go back to that table. Way back here somewhere. There it is. So we would go look up lauric acid. Okay, lauric acid is 12-0. We can remember that. 12-0. So I'm going to write that down right there. 12-0, that's what lauric acid is. So the reaction between glycerol and three molecules of lauric acid. So let's draw glycerol. It's a tri-alcohol. So it's three carbons, and each carbon has an alcohol group on it. And then the lauric acid. So that's an acid, and I'm going to line it up so I can esterify it. So there's one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And it says three molecules of that. So there's going to be three of these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, oh, I did that wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I drew it right and just thought it was wrong. Okay. So those are the ingredients. These are the things that are going to react through a serification and make a triacylglycerol. So these atoms here, and these atoms, and these atoms are all going to come out. So we're going to get three H2O molecules, three water molecules coming out as we condense and combine these four molecules together. Now all this stuff that I'm doing here is not necessary to draw the structure, but I'm just trying to show you kind of the thought process behind it. So if those guys leave, I'm going to just erase them. They are gone.
and in their place these guys just connect. That's fun. Would be more fun if that part had stayed erased. I need to have a little time to play around with this better. So basically, I just cut and pasted this guy, moved him over. Any questions? So fatty acid. A fatty acid is just a carboxylic acid with a long carbon chain. It's always with the glycerol. And the triacyl glycerol is always with glycerol, yes. Because, see, it's in the name, isn't it? Glycerol. Tri means three, and a seal is this, sorry, not that guy, this part right here. When we take the OH off of the carboxylic acid, what's left is the a seal group. So a triacyl glycerol is literally three a seal groups on a glycerol molecule. So you should be able to do something like that. So fats and oils are both naturally occurring mixtures of triacyl glycerols. And the, really the essential difference in them is their physical state at room temperature. Fats are going to be solids or semi-solids at room temperature and oils will be liquids at room temperatures. We don't really, we can't really um, give molecular formulas or draw specific structures for a certain fat that comes from sunflower seeds or that comes from beef fat because they're all mixtures okay and so it's all about mixtures so they're they're mixtures of triacyl glycerols in a fat it's a semi-solid or solid at room temperature fats are generally not always but generally obtained from animal sources you think about it, you you cook some hamburger or you cook some bacon and there's there's grease left in the pan and if you let that pan cool down to room temperature what happens to the fat it solidifies right but if you go and you get the bottle of canola oil or the bottle of olive oil that is a liquid at room temperature right and some of them you can even put in the freezer and they will not freeze they have very very low melting points Oils, then, are triacyl glycerol mixtures that are liquids at room temperature. So really the only difference between a fat and an oil is whether it's a solid or liquid. Oils are generally obtained from plant sources. And the composition of these varies. So even if you're looking at olive oil from the same species of olive tree, from this exact same type of olive tree, even the exact olive tree, but maybe from one month to the next or one season to the next, the composition is going to vary. From the animals, it's going to depend, the composition will depend on what they've been eating. And so we can't really nail down what they are exactly. Here's some generalizations. Question? Um, yeah, are they, uh, the fats, are they usually like simple? No, the, the fats are not necessarily simple. And um, it, it has more to do with the length of the chains and how saturated they are. So the degree of saturation has a lot more to do with whether it's a fat or an oil based on its melting point. So generalizations, um, 
and that gets right into this. Fats predominantly contain saturated fatty acids. And here is, here's a triacylglycerol. This is the glycerol part. Um, and here's the chains attached to it. When these chains are saturated, they're going to lay out straight, and there's, there's going to be more intermolecular attraction between the molecules. And th so this will melt at a higher temperature, much more likely to be a solid at room temperature. When you get unsaturated fatty acids in here, we get kinks in there. They don't pack together as well, and this will have a much lower melting point. So the oils are going to have larger amounts of mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Fats generally come from animals. We sometimes call them animal fats. Oils typically come from plants, but they also come from some fish. So if you think about it, an animal, whether it's a human or a cow, mammals have, um, they're warm-blooded, right? Their bodies maintain a certain body temperature that is elevated. And so at that temperature, these saturated fats are going to be either liquid or semi-solid. They're not going to be frozen. Well, what happens with something like a fish that lives in very cold water? Is that fish going to do well with saturated fats in its body? They're going to be frozen all the time. So some fish also have oils, and you may have heard of fish oil. You can buy fish oil supplements and stuff, and we'll talk in a little bit about why fish oil might be good for you. So some cold water fish are also going to have oils instead of fats just because they need it to have a lower melting point so it's not frozen in their bodies. Um, pure fats and oils are colorless, odorless, and tasteless. You're like, yeah, but olive oil has a particular taste, right? The taste, the color, the smell of fats and oils comes from other substances. So olive oil is isolated from olives. It's pressed and they do stuff to it. In that processing, they do not get rid of all the other natural components. It's not just triacylglycerols. There are other things, and it's the other things that give it the smell and the color and the flavor. And so a lot of times those things are, are good to have. But the actual pure fats and oils, no taste. Yeah, 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 the, the cold water fish are going to have um, a different family of fatty acids than the warmer water fish. This is kind of interesting. These are dietary oils and fats, um, different ones on the left. And this graph is showing the relative mixtures of saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fats or lipids, really, would be a better term. So something like canola oil has the, the smallest amount of saturated fats and the highest amount of, relatively high amount of uh, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. And then as we go down here, we see that all of these are plant sources. And here we get to the animal sources, um, pork and beef and butter, and we see that these have more of the saturated fats. There's a couple exceptions in here. There's coconut oil and there's palm oil. Um, coconut oil is, um, a lot of people are starting to use that again, and I actually have some in my kitchen. It makes great popcorn, by the way. Coconut oil has a melting point that's right around room temperature. So in the winter, when the house is a little cooler, it's very solid. In the summer, when you haven't turned the air conditioning on, it's a liquid. And sometimes it'll freeze and thaw during the day. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it's a liquid, but by the next morning, it's a solid. So you never know what you're going to get when you open the jar. But all of these, they're a mixture of different, different triacylglycerols.